Small rodents are ideal. They're plentiful in the spring, rapidly replaced, pose no risk for her to kill, and are easy to carry home. These young are just three weeks old, and yet they're already voracious meat eaters. The ultimate miniature hunter is the weasel itself. It can squeeze through an opening not much bigger than a wedding ring. It's the smallest carnivore on earth, ever. Their predatory finesse is unrivaled. They can deliver a lethal strike too fast for the human eye to follow. And yet they can also kill prey ten times their own weight. Their size has opened a door to prey from which their heftier cousins are banned. But nightmarish small killers can find themselves in a nightmare. These pint-sized predators are faced with an evolutionary schizophrenia. They're both predators and prey. Skunks are descended from a line of ancient weasels which appeared in Europe 22 million years ago. 13 species weigh in at no more than 3 kilograms but they have very few effective enemies. Skunks have chosen attack as their best form of defense. An animated stink bomb, all skunks flaunt a natty black and white outfit, which most predators learn to avoid after just one encounter. The stomping dance and loud calls are designed to intimidate and jog their attacker's memory. Skunks rarely have to let fly with their chemical stink bombs, whose jets can travel five meters. Five million years ago, the same drop in temperature that led to the evolution of the miniature killers also gave the weasels another problem, cold. Small bodies lose heat faster than larger ones. The stoat is smaller in volume than its martin-sized ancestor. But relatively, it has a greater area of skin from which to lose heat. Worse still, a long, thin body loses heat at three times the rate of a similarly sized, short, fat body. The body heat is more spread out and closer to the surface. That's why animals curl up when they're cold. With the first fall of snow, stoats turn white. As the temperature drops, their struggle to eat enough becomes more acute. If they don't make a kill once every 12 hours, they will freeze to death. The snow, however, can also be an ally. Just like an Eskimo's igloo, it insulates the stoat as it hunts beneath it. Snow can also be turned into a ready-made fridge to store surplus kills. The stoat raids the frozen food cache whenever necessary to maintain its furnace-like metabolism. But there was a final problem for miniature killers. How to produce enough young in only a very short lifetime? 
Millions of years ago, their much larger ancestors had more time on their hands. But as the weasels became smaller, they lived for fewer and fewer years. They had to speed up their reproduction to match the faster pace of their lives. The weasel, with no black tip to its tail, pumps out three litters of young in just 18 months of life. Stoats, with a black tip to the tail, being bigger, live longer. Unlike weasels, they can't grow fast enough to produce young in the same year that they were born. Instead, they've evolved two methods to get a flying start next year. The first delays the onset of pregnancy. The second ensures they're mated even before they've left the nest. Almost as soon as they're born, the female's reproductive system is active. So she could be mated before her eyes are open, but will not give birth until next spring. And in a good spring, a stoat can raise up to 19 babies. In tougher years, the litter is reduced by a mixture of abortion and death in the nest. These young females probably have just two years ahead of them in which to breed, but might already be off to a racing start. The weasel family has succeeded in making the most of every opportunity. But the price to pay, they have to live their lives at breakneck speed. But the story of a few other small carnivores remains untold. Some mongooses discovered that being social solved many of the problems of being small. Next week, we tell their story. And in this, the last episode of The Velvet Claw, we see that for the most majestic of carnivores, life at the top is tough.